Welcome to Rome 2 Total War 2 vs. 2 Multiplayer Action. I'm Southern Wolverine here with my general of the Mezzagete army. And let's pop into motion and see what our forces are. So my force is the same as I ran in the first round of Comrade Drago's 2v2 tournament, if you saw that either on his channel or on my previous video. This was actually the practice one of the practice battles for that is we were trying to fine-tune our build between Patrick and I. So I have the two Sokka Noble Armored Lancers, the two Sokka Cataphracts, six Step Noble Lancers split into groups of three, and four Armored Horse Archers split into groups of two. Um, Patrick has uh, some Hoplites. Uh, I believe he's got his six Pontic Swordsmen. I think he's just got the one Pike in this battle, and then his other Hoplite on the other flank five Eastern Archers, <clears throat> three Pontic Royal Cavalry, and a couple of the Scythian Horse Archers. So we're playing against uh, two very different army setups. The Epirus army has some pretty solid units. He's got a number of elites. These Hoplites aren't elite, but they are a tough unit. He's got four of them protecting the flanks of two units of Hellenic Royal Guard very dangerous pike unit and he's got two units of these royal peltas another very dangerous unit and then his cavalry is an aspis companion with two thessalian cavalry and this <laughs> pontus army is just pontic swordsmen down the line and most of them do have two or three uh, experienced chevron upgrades he's got i don't know something like ten units of these guys and a four eastern archers and then six six of these mercenary Scythian horse archers so interesting build and not not what I would take against a step faction and you will see why <laughs> certainly not something I would take against the Mazagete uh, the one thing you'll notice about this Pontus build is he doesn't have a heavy cavalry unit or a spear anywhere in his army so yeah so basically my plan is going to be to come out here and I'm going to use my armored horse archers to neutralize these Scythian horse archers and basically because of the armor that these guys have obviously they're called armored horse archers they're going to be able to stand up to these guys and we're, we've got a two to three numbers ratio here and that I should easily win that they might even win or at least neutralize each other at a two to one type of situation uh, the other thing that's going on here this guy's made a mistake in keeping these cavalry too deep as you may have seen on an earlier video where I did a river crossing battle these deep formations will get your skirmishers beat even against lesser numbers because overshoots are still gonna go into somebody whereas my troops are a lot more spread out they're gonna take less damage from overshoots so in any case, uh, Patrick is over here. He's got some uh, skirmishing going on. Not some skirmishing, but some some cav strikes have gotten into his, his archers in places, and he's trying to counteract this with his own um, royal cavalry. So these the Salians got some good strikes out here. They've done some decent damage. But here, here's what uh, here's what I wanted to catch. All right. So without any units that are really going to be able to hold up terribly well like I said now no hoplites no pikes no heavy cavalry to disrupt my charge uh, it's it's just this simple I just pulled all of my step noble lancers into a single line six cavalry wide did a massive group formation attack so you see they've all got these these group lines and those are going to change to charge orders in a moment and we're just going to slam right into this whole long line of Pontic swords meanwhile these horse archers are going to catch you know, they're continuing to hold these guys away from the fight so they can't disrupt my attack. These two units are going to come through to the rear. Those are the Sokka Noble Armored Lancers. And the Cataphracts are going to form the second part of the 1-2 punch. So the idea is these guys hit, stay there for a little bit, do some damage, pull out, then the Cataphracts hit to disrupt the, you know, counterattack or any attempt from these units over here to pin them. Because he does have a longer line than I do. And what I really want to get is I want to get a number of units behind him so I can get hammer and anvil squashing attacks using charging cab as both the hammer and the anvil 
but even without that set up just yet, this is still going to be a pretty devastating charge across the line. Now he does have, they are braced, but they don't have shield wall or anything up. And you see this whole line just gets smacked. Now some of these units held pretty well. This unit, not so good. And the archers are shooting in, but they're not going to do damage fast enough to turn this fight. So that's actually, this unit actually held up reasonably well. Maybe they didn't take a direct charge. Sometimes those group attack orders get a little confused and you don't get super clean attacks. But they work well enough, so I'm just going to pull them all out. You see some of these units got pretty well damaged. And the Sokka Cataphracts, Sokka Cataphracts absolutely wrecked some people. So you got a unit of half strength there, you got a unit, well, you know, lost a third of their guys there. And this one unit of Step Lancers actually accidentally pulled through, they charged so hard. So anyway, this one Lancer that pulled through and the two uh, Saka Noble Armored Lancers are now behind this sword line, which is exactly what I want. And this one Archer unit shooting it up is not going to be able to turn it around. So pretty much that's going to be the end of the Archer Force as a real danger. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Patrick and the Epirus Army are still kind of you know, lining up and skirmishing there. But here comes the... Well, I guess it's not a hammer and anvil so much it is two hammers. <laughs> two hammers coming in from opposite sides. And you see these units are just going to get squashed. Even though they're in the sword or the, the shield wall, I mean, you've got rear attacks all over the board. You're just getting getting massive routes. And now here come the Sokka Cataphracts back. You see, they only lost one man from, one man from each unit in the first charge. And they're just going to come right down. Look at that. These, these guys were in shield wall and everything. And it still pushed them back a good 10 feet and knocked a bunch of them down. So, yeah. So this is another in the series, like the How Not to Pike Box. This is the How Not to Fight Against <laughs> the Mazagete, or Step Factions in general. You see, this whole, this whole section that got hammer and hammer attacked basically just crumbled. So now I got... Lancer units out in front in the form of the Step Noble Lancers here and these two Sokka Cataphracts and what's left of that Lancer unit. And I've got a bunch of units coming around behind, so and it's just a case of rinse and repeat at this point. There's not much not much this guy can do to stop me anymore. His missile cap out here is completely destroyed. And you see I still have a lot of my armored horse archers left, despite them being outnumbered two to one. A few of the units got pretty badly damaged but not too bad at all. And the only thing he's got left of that whole force is 22 Scythian horse archers over there. So once again, we got another hammer and hammer attack. I'm gonna patent that phrase. <laughs> the hammer and hammer attacks continue over here and this is just gonna destroy the Ponic army in detail. Meanwhile, the uh, Epirus force is pushed out. I don't know why these, well, so what in any case, you got Hoplites now fighting Ponic swords. <clears throat> which is a fight that the Punic Swords will probably eventually win. Uh, the Aspis Companions are going to help turn that into their favor, though, or into the Epirus' favor. And these Pikes are going to be quite dangerous if they can get in here, because they will absolutely destroy these Levy Pikemen, and these Punic Swords won't be able to get into them. So this is a very dangerous position they're in, if they can push into the Sword units and get them destroyed. Uh, meanwhile, these Royal Peltists... <coughs> are just absolutely com <laughs> surrounded just fighting tons of conic swords and hoplites and uh, honestly they they would not do too badly in this fight because they'll do quite a bit of damage uh, but the flank bonus or the flank penalty is really going to hurt them so in any case Patrick has no desire to fight these spears any longer so he's going to pull back until I can get in position to rear attack them and these units out on the flanks, you see these guys are losing, those aspects of companions helped out, but now these uh, hoplites have just been rear charged by Sokka Cataphracts, and now they're going to start to take some serious losses. And the, the Aspis companions got hit by my other armored lancer that's still at full strength, or near full strength anyway. And they took some damage on the charge, they would, they would do a lot of damage to this unit, but of course I'm not going to let them fight one on one. Here comes the other armored lancers. And, you know, just the, these units in the back line are going to be able to slow down my cavalry attack because I'm trying to get the hammer and anvil here and take these pikes out because I asked Patrick to get in here and re-engage these pikes. 
And I know he's he's not going to last all that long in this fight, but he needs to lock these guys down so I can rear charge them, because the hammer and hammer would not work as well on them, because they can, any unit that charged from the front in, in terms of cavalry would get completely destroyed. I guess I could rear charge them, do the rear hammer first, and then if they turn to fight, you hit them with the other hammer. That might work, but. So in any case, here comes the massive rear charge on these pikes. And they're immediately going to start to waver. They're good, but they're not going to be able to hold up against that, plus army losses. And that, as they say, is that. Yeah, so in terms of the, the Ponic army, you're going to see just... Yeah, some of them did some damage against my cavalry. Archers were more or less a wash. The horse skirmishers, you know, they took out some of my horse skirmishers. But you see, I saw how many of these horse archers I still had left. So uh, that's the lesson for fighting against step factions: is one, don't don't expect swords to hold up against lancer charges. Uh, if you were able to, if if when I had charged in initially, he'd been able to wrap the other side around and try to pin my guys there, that might have been effective. Uh, but, but really, you should have some kind of spears, or, or even better, some kind of heavy cavalry that can tie them down and, and prevent my cavalry from getting these repeated cycle charges off. I mean, look at how much damage these Saka cataphracts were doing. And they didn't even get rear attacks to assist most of the time. These guys were just going headlong into swords and combined they had the better part of 700 kills, or 600 kills, sorry. I can do math. Uh, those Saka Noble Armor Lancers also did quite well, and you see the Horse Archers just shot up six whole units of skirmishers, so there was only one unit that had less than 100 kills, this one here. Not quite sure what happened to it, but no, you know what, that that might be the one that pulled through by accident. It took some extra, extra damage doing that. Hmm. But in any case, so, not a great, this might work against other factions, not great against the Step Faction. And once they were destroyed. This guy simply didn't have enough units to prevent Patrick. Even Patrick with by himself was getting flank attacks off on, on him because he had a lot more units to wrap around the flanks. He had, what, six more units? Which is why these, you know, Royal Peltas were getting into the three-on-one situations. And then once this other Pontus army was destroyed, you know, it was a simple matter of all these heavy lancers and things just coming in and slapping him in the back and despite his Aspis companions and his general and one of the units of hoplites I think trying to break up those attacks it's you know it just slowed down the inevitable so I hope you guys learned something both about using step factions and about fighting against step factions uh, and I also hope you enjoyed this video so if you do enjoy the video go ahead and hit the like button down wherever it is over here. Comment, subscribe to my channel if you like. Plenty more 2v2 action. And have a good day.